Quick video here about axis rotation. So this first shot is going to have very little to no axis rotation. As you can see, I'm so far up the back of the ball, it's just going dead forward to the touch of the lane. There is no rotation. There, there is still rev rate. Rotation and rev rate sometimes get confused there. Still rev rate. Still have RPMs in the ball, just no rotation, so the ball's gonna stand up and go really, really forward, resulting in missing hip pin. Not because the ball is too weak. The reason I'm showing you this Magic Gym here, it's got a lot of colors, and you can see rotation changes very easily. All right, the second shot here, I'm gonna add a little bit, but it's not gonna be a ton. It's just gonna be a little bit more than the last shot. Maybe just a tad more than I was bargaining for there, but I was trying to get my hand around it a little bit more than the previous shot. You see, still almost missed the pocket, but it's Swisher struck. So you can see the rotation changes compared to the first shot, where I added quite a bit more rotation, and the ball automatically made it back. Okay, now I'm gonna try to throw a normal shot with uh, my normal amount of rotation from this part of the lane. What do you know? I haven't moved my feet, I haven't moved my target. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more rotation than my normal stock rotation. Again, I have not moved my feet or my target. Just adding rotation, now I've got too much hook. Too much hook down lane, too much overall hook. Too much rotation, creating too much Inch angle down lane. Okay, I'm gonna try to max out my axis rotation here. It's been a long time since I've done this, so see how it goes. I never need to throw that release, so it's a little rusty. But I'm trying my hardest to get around it. And you can see it's just way too uncontrollable. And it's not ideal ball motion nor ball roll. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to exactly what I did the first frame, where I rolled it, and we should miss the hip end to the right, let's see. Yep, this is my normal stock rotation from this part of the lane. I hope you guys learned a little bit today about rotation. There's a lot of misconceptions on how rotation and RPMs are related when they're really not. Because I'm still loading up the same way when I'm trying to really forward roll it. But you can see how you can change your ball reaction just by staying up the back of it a little bit more or rotating it. Obviously, when you rotate it too much, your ball's gonna hook too much down lane. It's going to be too responsive. And same goes for being too far up the back of it. You're going to see very little change of direction because the ball's already gotten into its roll phase before it was ready to, especially for a ball like this. Now, obviously I'm showing you the extremes here with a huge asymmetrical ball like this and the huge extreme rotation changes that I was showing you. So I hope you guys learned a little something. If you ever have a question, please do not hesitate to leave them in the comments here on YouTube or reach out to me via any of my social media channels. I will gladly answer any questions you may have. If you like the jerseys that I wear in all my videos, including this really cool fresh drip that I've got here from EFX, please check out EFX over at apparelefx.com. Use my code SRGBBFS for 10% off the entire website. And when you go to drill your next Storm, Roto Grip, or Nano Global product, make sure you throw Turbo products in there, as well as my favorite tool, Switch Grip. Thank you guys so much for watching, and please like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And until next time, I'll see you.